Today's video is about best practices for folder structure in Tosca. Organizing your projects with folders helps you find, classify and scale your work, especially when working with a larger team and multiple products, okay? A clear, logical folder structure keeps your project manageable as it grows. Now, in this video, I'm going to explain how to set up uh, for Tosca main section, so the modules, the test cases and the execution, okay? So without further ado, let's get into the uh, modules section. There's the standard folders which I'm sure, I'm sure you're intimately familiar with. And the example given, if we create a new folder, it all starts with a new folder. We're going to do, you know, this is the name of the product that you're testing, okay? Or automating. Um, the application, the vehicle insurance application. Don't forget the to put in the, the application name and then in brackets the acronym, okay? And then we're going to create a few more folders. And you might say uh, general modules and then pop-ups the bane of our life right guys especially if you have to, if you have to freeze these things the quoting process so this is this is how things should look okay if you want to organize things nicely account and then finally we go footer it's in the wrong ring in the wrong place right there you go account and footer now, this quoting process, this is where all the magic happens. So you're going to have like an automobile. That's kind of in the way, isn't it? Um, another one would be truck. Is this starting to make sense for you? Like how it's laid out? Motorcycle or scooter. And then camper. Now, that's not in the video game camper. That's like a camper van. So... Modules, like, are the, are, are, they're the building blocks of your tests, okay? Uh, so if you follow these best practices uh, for creating your folders, you're, you're well on your way, okay? So basically, starting at the top, create folders that match your application's layout, okay? Um, for example, the web structure, or maybe the application has a bunch of tabs. That's an obvious starting point. So start off the application name, the acronym, and then the main areas. Like, you might have a general tab. You might have a quoting process tab. And if you go into that, you'd have like a bunch of other tabs. Now, I know I'm talking about a website, but this could be an application, like some sort of SAP application. So these main areas, you could also have uh, like in the general, you could have like login and user profile type stuff. It depends on how complicated your application is, you know. Um, you might also have specific processes such as login process or edit profile, because that can be quite a complicated page, you know. Um, so you might have general account, uh, the quoting account and footer, but you might also have uh, profile. Okay, it really depends. It's it depends on your application. So I can't really go into too many details. But what I would say is avoid confusing categories. Make sure folders don't overlap or cause confusion about where to place something. Like, it's really obvious that if you have a lot of header stuff. The header stuff goes above the footer stuff, doesn't it, right? Nobody's going to wonder, oh, do I put this uh, stuff at the bottom of the page in the top of the page? That's really quite obvious that you don't do that. And it's very important you don't make it a confusing categories, okay? Um, also, you'll notice the names are short and they're clear. So keep names simple and easy to read in search, in search results, okay? For example, use login instead of user login process. That, I hope that makes sense, okay? Um, if we go to the test case section, uh, this is a library, isn't it? And this is reusable test app blocks, okay? Okay, just as a side note, if you want to contact me, there's the YouTube channel. You're probably already on it. There's the Telegram channel. I'll put some QR codes on the screen here. And there's the, uh, if you want to buy me a coffee, okay, that would be really appreciated. But let's get back to business. If we go in here, this is how things should be laid out. So you create a folder. What's the name of the application? Well, it's vehicle insurance, isn't it? Application. AIA, right? And in there, uh, you know, you, you have to kind of similarly kind of break down how things actually work for the business. And the application will closely reflect, reflect the business, you know? So you might want you do a lot of testing around the customers. You have to do a lot of testing around claims. 
You have to do a lot of testing around transactions. You're going to have to do... This is the reason why this thing exists. So you can do some billing, okay? Money, money, money. It's very, very important, okay? And inside the customers, you might have another folder. You might have, like, create customers. Like, how do they get into the system, okay? And you might say, well, they're already in the system, but we need to change uh, the name of the customer. Or we might need to change... Uh, the address and then when they realize that your insurance company uh, isn't there for their protection and it's just there to make money and not actually make any payments in the event of an accident the customer comes along and says goodbye so you want to delete the customer and obviously then you're going to need to view customers so that 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 really closely matches the create read update and delete doesn't it we've all heard of crud haven't we crud Create, read, update, delete. So for entities like customer or vehicle types, you're going to need, or even transactions and billings, you're going to need something similar to that, aren't you? You're going to need to have to have the ability to um, create a claim, read a claim, update a claim, delete a claim, perhaps. Same goes for transactions and billings. So you could repeat this structure, but obviously you need to change the names. Um... So look, just to kind of make sure everybody's on the same page, a test case is a series of steps that Tosca will perform in your application, right? And here's how to structure your test case folders. When using the requirements or test-driven design, copy your folder structure from the requirements or test case design sections. How? Well, open the requirements or test case design folders, select all items, right-click, and choose Copy Table to Clipboard. Then paste this structure into the test cases folder by right-clicking and say Create Folder Structure. There it is there, create folder structure, okay? But that's kind of assuming you've got a big project. What I just showed you there initially when I was typing is, it's a small enough project. But if you're getting into like test case design and all that kind of stuff, use that structure. It's important to maintain that structure. Um, but if you haven't got requirements or test case design, um, use the following structure, as I mentioned. Uh, the application name in brackets, and then business process stuff like order processing, and then sub processes add to order, check out. You could consider the customer to be a process as well. And you create customers, you add customers, and you modify them, okay? Now, let me see what else we need to do. We need to cover the execution section. And uh, we'll start with that now. And the execution section is the green section. Now, I don't have an awful lot of stuff in here because I don't do many videos about the uh, the green section, to be, quite, to be, to be fair now, you know? But we've got execution and execution lists, okay. So we create another one. Create a folder. And we'll call this like vehicle insurance application AIA. Oh, disappoints me that it's not at the top. And inside, you're going to need an archive. You can always create your little archive folder, okay. And then regression tests now I'd normally use um, this feature here create folder structure from whatever I have in the copy and paste buffer but I'm making a video to show how things actually get put together manually and there's the uh, smoke tests do you know how smoke do you know why smoke tests are called smoke tests It's because when they were first creating computers they would turn it on and uh, if it let out a little bit of smoke a very uh, a capacitor or an inductor had burnt out That'd be the test. It'd be like turning the device on and off, you know. Uh, so that's why a smoke test is just a super quick test where you turn the system on and don't do anything else with it. So you might have uh, your vehicle thing, and then we create another one. We got the L. If you've, you've obviously done the training, right? Because you're not one of those guys who tries to do automation on Tosca without training. You re probably remember the web shop, right? And in there, uh, we would have the same layout again. In which case, you can just go like this. You just take that, copy it, and then paste it. Okay. So that's where you put your smoke, and this is where you put your regression tests. Do you know why regression tests are called regression tests? It's because a regression is when something goes backwards. So if you have a 100 tests, and you run them all, and they work fine in release one, and then in the next sprint, somebody develops something, and you run 
your 100 tests and one of them fails, that's a regression, right? So you got 99 passing test cases and you got one failing test case. That's a regression. And those regression tests are designed to make sure that the system doesn't go backwards when developers add in new features. But let's wrap up this video. Uh, I've been talking for quite a long time. Um, the execution section is where you organize and run your test cases, okay? I hope you know that already. Use folders to categorize your test results. Organize by test type. So you create folders for common types, smoke, regression, archive. The smoke test is high priority stuff, quick tests. Um, smoke, there you go. Regression, it's the full suite of tests run regularly, okay? And then archive, store older test results here to avoid clutter. You can use a date format too. That helps tidy things up and keep them neat as well. Now, if you're testing multiple applications, use a separate folder for each application. Okay, as you can see, I did that there. Okay, um, I've got the vehicle insurance application, and then I've got the web shop application. I know it's confusing having the uh, virtual folders in there. Maybe, maybe you should, I could probably tidy it up like this: applications. All right, and we put the vehicle in there, and we put the, oh sugar. What just happened? And we put the uh, web shop in there. So now we tidied it up. So if you go into applications, you'll see your two apps in there. And each app has its, has its nice little folder structure. Okay? So you use a separate folder for each application and repeat the folder structure for each one. Smoke test, regression, archive. So uh, in summary, I am wrapping up the video now, right? So in summary, so th thanks for sticking around. Uh, in terms of um, summary of best practices, Consistency is key. Use the same structure across modules, test cases, and execution for easy navigation. If you're lucky enough to work with some Tricentis uh, Tosca consultants, this is how they work, okay? Keep it simple. Use short, clear folder names. And, and last but not least, avoid overlap, okay? Ensure each module and test case has one logical home. So by following these folder guidelines, you'll create a clear, organized Tosca workspace that's easy to manage and scale. Uh, if you got any value out of this, please like, share, subscribe. I'll put up a QR code if you want to buy me a coffee, and I'll put up a QR code that will give you access to my free Telegram community with over 3,000 Tosca users in one place. Um, if you're going to go in there and ask for help, make sure you read the mandatory message. And when you ask for help from people on the other side of the planet, screenshots, steps to reproduce, and what you've tried really goes a long way to uh, encouraging people to help you, okay? Okay, that's it. Take care. Bye-bye.